You mentioned two minute, which gets me on to pet peeve number two of the day, which is you guys are so good with tempo. Like the two minute yes. offense, I think you yes. guys are elite. When you go spread, gun, yes. Chris Thompson next to you, working one on one. We see that in two minute situations, but yeah. you are allowed to do that whenever you'd like. Sure. Why not more of that? Sure. Because you know, we've heard in the past, like, oh, we want to do some of that, but then it doesn't happen. Is it all situational yeah. or what? Yeah, good, good, great question. I mean, in practice, too, we've had our two-minute drills, and we felt really good and efficient moving the ball down the field when we do it. So it's something we do well. We protect so well, which helps. Uh, we have a lot of guys we can spread the ball around to, so they can't just cover one or two guys and shut us down. Um, I think it goes back to time of possession, trying to not just throw our defense right back on the field if we're you know quickly three and out. Um, I think it goes back to the fact that we know at the end of the day to win in this league, especially late in the year in tough weather in the playoffs, you've got to be able to run the football. And good teams can do it. And while there are occasionally games where you've got to throw 45 times, 50 times, and, and do it through the air, when you can run the football, it changes the whole complexion of your season and of your consistent ability to win football games. So um, we want to establish a run. We want to be good at that. Obviously, if it's not working or we feel like it's a week where it's it's a defense that's going to shut us down, then we'll probably abandon it and try to throw the football and beat a team that way. But, you know, we'd like to be consistent, be balanced, keep teams off balance. And a big part of our passing game in the past couple of years has been play-action pass. Mm -hmm. You're not having a good play-action pass offense if you're not running the football or at least trying to run the football, giving the threat of runs. So we've got to be balanced to really open up the passing game. Kirk, a fan question a moment ago mentioned uh, Bruce Allen in there. What's your relationship like with him now, and how has that changed and evolved? We have a good relationship because communication has been good. Um, we're on the same page. He knows you know, what uh, I feel we need to do to win, and I know what he feels we need to do to win. And um, you know, Again, if, if we win football games, everything else takes care of itself. Uh, uh, we'll both be in a good position, and this fan base will be excited. And uh, if we don't win football games, then, yeah, it's it's not going to go well. But um, we understand that, and uh, it's a competitive business. And, you know, as I've said, how the ball's in the team's court in the off season. Between now and the end of the season, the ball's in my court, and i got to go play football well. And, uh, you know, this is my time to go out there and prove that, uh, that I, you know, belong here. Next question from a listener. What's your name? Where'd you come in from? I'm Brian from Stafford. How you doing, Kurt? Doing well. Thanks for coming. Um, just wanted to um, do one comment, one question. Um, comment is, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm really proud to, of how you conduct yourself on and off the field, and um, just keep it up because Thanks. I think you put a really uh, good image out there for Redskins and uh, as a team leader of the of the uh, Thank you. group. And then um, my question is, is um, I'm here with my son Jack, and we both. Um, we both enjoy going behind the scenes and like knowing what it's like behind. So sure. I was wondering maybe if um, maybe if uh, we could have like uh, Jay and John Gruden breaking down a play where you hit Terrell uh, prior deep or something like that. Can we <laughs> can we help on a on a hitch and go or something like that? The impersonation. Yeah, Jay, Jay and John and uh, you you looking at film hitting Terrell prior. He wants on, like on a, a role Gruden, play here on a, a double Gruden, on a Gruden double go coaches. on a double go. Yeah, sketch idea. Which one's Jay? Which one's John? Yeah, well, I don't know why John's in the he meeting room. He would be by John, I guess. <laughs> He's yeah. probably both, huh? Yeah. yeah, he would have to be. I don't know. This is so awkward right in front of all these people. Uh, <laughs> Well, but but in all sincerity, the if, just to go into that, if you guys have something going and it's going good, is it the type of thing where you got, where where Jay likes to dwell on it and keep playing it over and over again? Is oh man, it starts like getting into <laughs> doing his Randy Macho Man type yeah. stuff, or does he harp yeah. on the negative? Like, give me some insight there. Yeah. What I like about Jay is um, he's very to the point. Uh, he makes it very clear, very simple. Um, and Jay's not a control freak. Jay's not trying to uh, micromanage. Yeah. Um, which is why I think the longer I play, the more command I have, the, the better I feel out there, uh, the better it's going to be. It's like a, you know, a double benefit because he wants a quarterback who can really take the reins and, and, you know, and really control it and, uh, and have a lot of say. And you can't do that until you've earned it and been out there and been through it. So uh, I think the longer we, we work together, it's only going to get better and better and better, and it makes for a good relationship. So, uh, um, you know, but he's in a different role this year. Going back to 2014 was the last time he was really in that role of calling plays and devising everything So and being in the room so much. So um, it is a little new or different from that standpoint. But um, at the same time, he's, uh, you know, he's been there, done that. He had success, went to three straight playoff bursts with the, with the Bengals, and uh, uh, Andy Dalton went to several Pro Bowls with him. And he likes to throw the ball. He understands the drop-back game, um, and you'll see that. So... Um, you know, we're going to throw the ball this year. There'll be plenty of, plenty of yards through the air. And uh, what we got to do is we got to then convert it into points in the red zone. 
and we've got to be balanced in the run game. And if we can do that, I think we got a lot of good things ahead. How much different or how much new is there in the offense? Because Sean was not just a Jay guy. He was a Kyle guy. Right. And so Jay and Sean don't see eye to eye on everything in terms of moving the ball. Is it going to – will we be able as novice yeah. football fans to notice the difference? Uh, I don't know that you will. I don't know that you will notice much of a difference. I think you'd have to go through several weeks, and it'd be an interesting study to see what's the comparison of – Play action passes and screens and quick games and dropbacks and you know how much of those are are uh, are different from what it was the last two years. It'd be interesting to see, but I think it'll look pretty similar. Um, you know, I don't want to give away you know what we're planning on doing, but at the same time, uh, um, you know, I, I felt like last night felt like last year a lot, and uh, it didn't feel like a, a brand new offense. Yeah, the ball probably ends up in Jordan Reed's hands sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well you, know, said. you don't overcomplicate well, things, right? A lot yeah. of Jamison Crowder. I'll feel good about that. Who's next? Right here up front. This is actually a question from Jeremiah. Who Jeremiah's right. got get, not only the jersey, but the pants, he, too. He, yeah, he's, he's actually got a helmet Full uniform. Here too. That's uh, outstanding. So, uh, he is a huge fan of Kirk Cousins. All right. But Thank you, Jeremiah. But he wanted to know uh, who your favorite receiver to pass to is. Well, I always say that picking a favorite receiver is like a parent trying to pick a favorite child. <laughs> you know, it's everybody's different. I, you know, there's positives and, and negatives and pros and cons to each one, but it's hard to pick a favorite. Uh, I will say this, if I could just kind of – praise our receiving core in general. Uh, I continue to be really excited about Terrell Pryor. People talk about his size and all that. Yeah, that's great. But he goes about his business like a professional. He comes to work every day. He sees the big picture. He doesn't look at life through a straw. Being a former quarterback, he understands it takes a whole group to make an offense go. Uh, he understands coverage. Um, he's only going to get better. I think he's still in the early portion of his development as a wide receiver. And um, I'm excited to just in enjoy playing with him this year. Josh Doxson, I'm excited about because much the same way. I think he's only scratched the surface of what he's going to be able to do, and uh, it's all potential right now, and so we've got to get that potential to turn into production, and we're excited about that. We know what Jamison Crowder can do. You could argue that Jamison is our best receiver, you know, just because of what he's already shown and, and how, how natural he is at the position. Um, and then just really excited about our tight end core and the depth we have there. You saw the great catch Niles Paul made last night for a touchdown. People will forget about Niles because of the injuries, but he's a former wide receiver, so he can do some stuff for us in the past game. And then I love getting Chris Thompson involved again last night with some great plays and you know catching the ball, and he was really strong in protection as well. So it's a whole group, and uh, Ryan Grant is going to help us as well. He's had a great camp and continues to take another step. So I'm excited for uh, what this year is going to look like with the receiving core. Scott's Jacker with our next fan's question over here. <laughs> Hi, uh, Carl from Southern Maryland with my uh, son Willie back there. Um, got a little bit of shtick. 20-plus years of Danny here. Um, any chance week 17 on the show after with them, you can let us know where you're going. I'm 4XL. It takes a little <laughs> while to, to get a new jersey. So You know what? I'll try to be a little more decisive this year maybe <laughs> and not say that I need more time. I appreciate and, uh, it. Like I try to move more quickly. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for not holding people up. Gotcha. I appreciate it. Thank you much. Can do. <laughs> Appreciate you. Next question from a listener. You guys get an opportunity. Rare chance here to talk with Kirk Cousins. Uh, what's up, Kirk? Uh, Mark from Alexandria. Hey, Mark. Uh, can you, first off, just give me a you like that for my snap? <laughs> oh, he's going to snap it live. You like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Young people. That was fun. I like that. <laughs> I would have never thought to do that. <laughs> Young people. Young people. If you had fantasy, where would you draft yourself? Ooh. That's a good question. Yourself. If I, so the, great the, the last time I played fantasy football, I think I was in eighth grade. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm not too big into it. But uh, the way I understand it is they value touchdowns, they value yards. Uh, so you're going back to, you know, who's going who's gonna to put the ball in the air and who's going to make plays. But, um, you know, I think when you look at the way we protect and the, the talented uh, skill positions, and the commitment that, that Jay has and the understanding that Jay has of throwing the ball, I think that it's going to give me a chance to, to, to be a good fantasy player this year, if you will. Uh, <laughs> but ultimately, as you know, I just want to win games. And if it means handing the ball off to Rob Kelly and I, you know, I go 9 for 12 in a game and kill my, you know, people's fantasy teams, I'm okay with that. You know? <laughs> So I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't be the first pick. That'd be a little <laughs> conceited, but uh, uh, you know, I, I would like to think I can help a fantasy team here this year. But uh, you know, like anybody, anything else, you got to find value, right? So try to find value and not not over over pick me either. I think I heard I'm going to do very well. Maybe that third, was in there. Maybe third round. That something was in like there. that. Uh, who's next? Hey, you doing Kirk? My name is Travis. We're from Alexandria. Hey, Travis. So I got a quick question here. Um, 
I want to know what it's like with the headset when Jay's sure. in your ear. The second a play ends, how soon is he in your ear talking about the oh. next play? Yep. And I know I think you have until there's 15 seconds on yes. the play clock, right? Yes. So can you give me like a play? I just want to know what it was, what it's like to be in you know your ear. Sure. Great question. So uh, I have a speaker on each side of my uh, helmet, just below where the hole is by the ear. There's an orange circle that is a speaker that's wireless to Jay's headset, and um, uh, he can talk to me, but at 15 seconds on the play clock, he can no longer talk to me. So if for some reason we didn't get the play in fast enough, like there have been times where there's deliberation among the coaches as to what to call, and it's like 18, 17, 16, and then I get the play call, and it'll be like, go trips right, and then and it cuts out. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I got trips right, so now I got to figure out what do we want to go with here. And that's where we may call a timeout, or we may you know, just roll with it and say, they'll say you know, we'll see what he calls. Um, but usually it's getting in well ahead. And I love last night because I talk with, with it you know, to, to the play callers. I say, look, I need time at the line of scrimmage to use my cadence to decipher what the defense is doing. And if, if you give me the play call with 20 seconds left and I'm calling it and then we're walking the line of scrimmage and I'm only able to use about 12 seconds of the play clock to assess the defense and send a motion, this is a problem. I need time. And last night I loved it because I kept breaking the huddle and looking up, and it was like 19 seconds. And I'm like, oh, this is a dream. I can sit back here and just kind of take my time. And I was snapping the ball with six, five, four seconds. So that really helped. But, uh, you know, a typical uh, deal, it'll come in with probably 30 seconds. You know, Jay was pretty decisive last night. There wasn't a lot of deliberation. And uh, um, it's a little staticky. You know, I, I used to put my ha uh, hands up to my helmet to really be able to hear it more clearly. And the louder it is, like if we hit a big play and it's really loud in there and Jay's trying to call the next play, I'm – barely able to hear the play call, but, um, uh, you know, it'd be like, Hey, go, uh, trips, right. 300 jet steamer. Uh, it's just a simple call that we'll get to. And, um, you know, it's easy to, easy to now say. When you get that, you have obviously priorities, you know, right away, like Jamison's one Jordan's two. Yes. yes. So like with trips, right. 300 jet steamer, that's a, you know, what we would call a, a three deep, two deep read. Meaning if we get single high, we want to work uh, a certain route. If we get Split safeties, we want to work a certain route, and then we know we have to reset to our halfback as our outlet. And obviously, if the halfback's used in protection, then he's not available, and so you got to be, be aware of that as well. And then, um, um, you know, we can work backside if we get an ideal look or a premier look, we call it. You guys got all that, right? What's the uh, yeah. what's the balance between, hey, watch out for the strong safety, man. Watch out for the linebacker. The, sure. the, the mic, the same. The, he can name all 11 guys. Sure. You know, like, what's the balance there with, like, a key, like, yep. hey, on this play, check this out, versus... Yep. Yep. Just let me run the play, man. Sure. So that's one of Jay's philosophies is, you know, every protection has has different rules with it. And, uh, you know, Jay will use seven players in protection, which takes, you know, the pressure off of me because now we have what we call max protection, meaning we have a, a lot of guys protecting and very few guys running a route, which gives me time to be able to uh, assess the defense. And then there are other protections where only five guys are protecting and we're sending five guys out on a route, which means I need to know where the line's going and I need to see the blitzes. And if they bring more than we can block or they overload a side, I'm going to be what we call hot, meaning I don't have time to get the ball out. i got to find a quick element and, and throw it quickly. So protection is the name of the game. That's probably the biggest growth from a college quarterback to a professional quarterback is to understand defenses enough to also then understand protections. Because if you're not protecting, you don't know where your pressure is coming from, it's hard to play. You're constantly getting hit, and you're constantly taking sacks. One last thing. Uh, I don't think people have an understanding of how much – you invest in just like your body with that being what yeah. basically makes you your money, whether it's the way you sleep or the treatment you get from chiropractors. Give people an idea like during sure. the week of what all you're doing to get ready for a Sunday. Yeah, it's a tough balance between the X's and O's, time at the building, preparing for the football side, and then knowing that I also need to prepare my body at home for the physical side of the season, especially I need to be doing things week one, two, and three so that I'm still there in weeks 11, 12, and 13. And, um, you know, I have to be available. I mean, that's something that Mr. Snyder will even communicate to me. Like, look, if, if you're our guy, you got to be out there. You know, we can't have you on the sidelines injured. And so I understand that. And as a result, I want to really make an investment because I only get one body. And um, I talk to these guys like Drew Brees at the Pro Bowl and say, how have you been able to play 15, 16, 17 years and just not miss games and still feel good at your age? You're not limping around. You look like you're 26. How do you do that? And it's a combination of discipline, diet, uh, uh, discipline, sleep. Uh, going to bed early, getting a good nine hours, and um, and then things like a hyperbaric chamber, things like uh, stretching, having a personal trainer. Uh, you know, it takes a financial investment, but it's well worth it. And uh, it takes discipline, but as you know, it's a beautiful thing when you can put it all together and be feeling good. Oh, I, I know, yeah. Hyperbaric uh, chamber, I've man, been... that's a great way to sleep. Face them. <laughs> yeah, Jay gives me a hard time for it. He, a couple times at practice in training camp, I would scramble to my left, and I have this bad habit of, while well, I'm scrambling to my left, I'll turn back and stop and look to throw back. 
and he said, Kirk, you're going to get yourself killed. And if you keep doing that, that DN's going to hit you. You're going to need three chambers. So <laughs> he'll you know, kind of make those jests at the chamber. But You get uh, nine hours of sleep a night? I tried to, you know, and we had actually had a sleep uh, uh, doctor come in from Stanford this offseason to talk to our team, and she communicated the importance of sleep to us and how to handle that because we had a few West Coast trips this year. We're going to leave a day early. All these things that go into being ready for Sunday and kickoff and not being all out of whack, and we talked about that, and maybe we should practice at some different hours this year to be ready for that and to play better, and uh, she said that some of the top athletes in the world, the LeBron Jameses, the Roger Federers, these guys are sleeping like 12 hours a night. And she said that, you know, we think that, oh, you know, you oversleep, you sleep too much, you're lazy. The research is showing that, you know, if you want to cut corners and only get five, six hours a night, that's fine for a time, but that catches up with you. And eventually that, you get the short end of the stick. And so for the long-term health and long-term production and to be there in week 17, uh, I try to get nine hours a night. And the key is I'm still getting up at six. So the key is getting to bed at nine rather than sleeping in. You know, that's the key is being disciplined enough to say, hey, it's, the first quarter of this game, I really want to watch it, but I'm turning it off and I'm going to bed. That's hard to do. Yeah, the baby will help with that schedule. Keith. It'll be much easier. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You guys, a whole another, that's a whole other 30 Give it a month. Know, right? Anything you, with a captive audience here you want to say on behalf of uh, the sure. team or to the sure. Redskins fans before we let you go? Well, I just want to say thank you. Um, it's a privilege to play for you all, and um, you guys have been phenomenal from day one that I've been here. And uh, uh, we, my wife and I love living here. We love being in this city. And um, when you think about when I talk about being disciplined and, and doing the things you don't want to do so you can do the things you do want to do, uh, what I want to do is to give the people in this room something to cheer about. I think when I run out in the field, I think of you guys either in the stadium or at home or on, around your TV, TV says gathered with family and friends, living and dying with every up and down of this team in this season. And uh, I, I, I understand that when we win, this city comes alive. And crime goes down the day after we win. I mean, this is, it is a beautiful thing when the Redskins are winning, okay? So this city comes together, and in a city where there can be a lot of division, there's one thing we can all be united about, and that's the Redskins. And when they're winning, we come together. And I understand that. I'll put it that way. It doesn't mean we're going to go 16-0, and but understand that I get that. I, I understand that, and, uh, and I understand we need to win. And it's a beautiful thing. When, and you guys did it in the 80s and the early 90s with Joe Gibbs, and we can do it again. But um, I, I want to see that happen. I want to make that come alive. And I, when you see the Redskins and people wear Redskins around town, I want people to think excellence and class. And uh, we can do that. Outstanding. Kirk, thank you very much. This was great, Absolutely. man. Appreciate it. Well and thank done. you to Kava for being here. That's right. We got to thank Lindsay for making this event possible and our friends at Kava who are catering today's lunch. Another good way to have a long career. That's right. Eat a lot of Kava. I've heard that. That's the stuff you should be eating to have yeah. a long career. So thank you so much to them. Thanks to Lindsay. Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Cousins. Thank you, guys. Thank you.